Hello students, I am Akanksha Jain. Today we are going to discuss Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy or it is also known as NMR. NMR is actually the study of the nucleus of protons and it is on the basis of uh, the basis of this spectroscopy is that we can consider the subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons as spinning on their axis and when these nucleus is spinning it creates a magnetic field around itself so in many atoms these spins are paired against each other such that the nucleus of the atom they have no overall spin however in some atoms the nucleus possess an overall spin and because of which it creates a magnetic field around itself the resulting spin magnet has a magnetic moment which is represented by mu and which is no doubt proportional to the spin. So NMR spectroscopy or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy it is based on this fact that the nuclei of atoms they have magnetic properties like spinning charges and since they have these magnetic properties they can act as tiny bar magnets and it has a particular angular momentum too. Now uh, coming to the spin properties of the nucleus the rules for this net spin is like if the number of neutrons and the number of protons are both even then the nucleus will not have any spin and we will not be able to study uh, such atoms such nuclei with NMR spectroscopy. In case the number of neutrons and plus the number of protons is odd then the nuclei has the half integer spin which is represented by half or 3 by 2 or 5 by 2. In case the number of neutrons and the number of protons are both odd then the nuclei has the integer spin. The overall spin is represented by I which is the spin quantum number and the possible orientation a nucleus can have is given by 2i plus 1. We will be discussing this later in these slides. So this is how the uh, these are the bar magnets actually and this is how these bar magnets align themselves when a particular field is applied. So NMR spectroscopy also relies on the ability of these atomic nuclei since they are behaving as small magnets. So NMR spectroscopy also uh, on, also have uh, also is also based on this ability of atomic nuclei and these nuclei they also align themselves in the presence of an external magnetic field. So uh, we have the nucleus now we have the magnetic field we are aligning the nucleus in the presence of the magnetic field so <clears throat> the theory behind nmrs comes from the spin of the nucleus and how it generates a magnetic field because it is spinning and it has a charge so it is spinning and when it is spinning it is creating a magnetic field around itself so without an external applied field these nucleus these are spinning in random direction they don't have any particular orientation but when we apply an external magnetic field these nucleus they align themselves either with or against the field external magnetic field now this is what possible orientation a nuclei can have as explained previously the nucleus can have 2i plus 1 possible orientation where i represents the spin quantum number now if it has i the value of i is half then it means the nucleus can have two possible orientation now these two possible orientations can be represented as given in the figure it can be plus half or it can be minus half so this is one with the field in the direction of the field and one is against the direction of the external field so one is the lower energy state and the other one is the higher energy state
so in nmr what we are doing is we are first align that nuclei in the presence of an external magnetic field and then we are flipping this nucleus between the two energy states with the help of electromagnetic radiation and in case of nmr we use the radio frequency waves so the electromagnetic radiation is used to flip the alignment of the nuclear spins from the lower energy to the higher energy state which is against the direction of the magnetic field and for this transition from the lower energy state to the higher energy state the nucleus requires energy and this energy is provided by the em waves however this energy difference between the spin state is quite small and this corresponds to the radio frequency range of the em spectrum so these are the two spin states this is plus half and this minus half my nucleus is spinning uh, is flipping in between these two energy states the difference in the energy between the two spin state is dependent on the external magnetic field and is always no doubt very small this figure illustrates the two spin states have the same energy while the external field is zero but diverge as the field increases so when we are increasing the field along the x-axis this energy state is diverging and now more energy is re required to flip my nucleus from the lower energy state to the higher energy state so a strong magnetic field are necessary for nmr spectroscopy and the international unit of magnetic flux is tesla the modern NMR spectroscopy, they use powerful magnets having the field of 1 to 20 Tesla. Eradication of the sample with radio frequency energy is corresponds to exactly to the spin separation of the specific set of nuclei. And this will cause excitation of those nuclei from plus half state to the minus higher energy half state. So this is the instrumentation of a simple NMR spectroscopy. First we have the sample holder. This is a solution of sample in a uniform 5 mm glass tube which is oriented between the poles of the powerful magnets. We have permanent magnets to provide the homogeneous magnetic field. We have magnetic coil to induce magnetic field when current flows through them. We have the radio frequency generator. Now this radio frequency radiation of appropriate energy is broadcast into the sample with the help of these antenna coils. We have the radio frequency receiver. The receiver coil surrounds the sample tube and detects the radio frequencies emitted as the nuclei relax to the lower energy state. It means when it flips from the higher energy state to the lower energy state, it will be releasing certain amount of radio frequency energy and that would be detected by these detector system so we have a proper readout system for analyzing and recording our data so nmr spectroscopy is spectrum is acquired by either varying or sweeping the magnetic field over a small range and we are observing the radio frequency signal from the sample or what we can do is we can vary the frequency or our RF waves and we can keep the magnetic field constant. So in both ways the spectrum can be taken.